Hello and welcome to the Little Woman podcast. Before entering the podcast, I wanted to let you all know that a Little Woman podcast now has merchandise available at society6.com slash littlewomanpodcast. There you will find stickers, posters, mugs and t-shirts to fulfill all your little woman needs. Come and check it out. Link is also in the description. And now, to the podcast. Yes, that, that is very much true. And I say, I really love how Friedrich was introduced in New York. And I love how great his character also is in this chapter. Because when he comes to, I think, Orchard House to visit Joe and he sees that she's company, he at first doesn't want to go inside because she's busy and all that stuff. But then she, he stays because Joe looks at him in such a way and because he because she just throws him into the house, kind of like she shows him into the house. And how he, like he doesn't change for Joe. Like he doesn't uh, pretend he is somebody else when he talks to Joe's parents. He is still himself. And I also love that in this chapter, he looks at Laurie a great deal. And he also looks at Joe a great deal. And the fact that Joe is like, she has to keep her eyes focused because she is afraid that her eyes will look constantly at Friedrich is also very funny. There's something about him that speaks right to her soul. It reminds me of that part in New York when he's speaking about religion and then I think in that chapter he really becomes Joe's hero. So there's something similar that happens here. Definitely, like I said, I really love Friedrich as a character. And I also love the fact that Louisa and my uncle didn't just like gloss over the fact that Friedrich was visiting her. It was a very important chapter and it also let the, the audience know Friedrich even better because he was there for Joe, but he also, like, he wasn't only nice to Joe, he was nice to everybody around her, because that is who he is. You are pretty well educated when it comes to Louisa May Algot. Would you like to tell a little bit how you got introduced to the old woman and her writings? <laughs> it happened like this. I was kind of craving for reading something in English, but, and I was like, why not try some classic out? And then I, it was the first time I kind of discovered it, but there are kind of a few bad reviews, so I wasn't really sure, and I couldn't like couldn't get a reading extract of it. So I thought to myself, let's wait a bit. But then, when I got to the shop to look for some English book, there again it was, and it was like the whole version of it, like the I think seventeen hundred seventy-seven pages, and I re- read a bit into it. And I was like, okay, this is the novel I really want to read. So I started reading this one, and I uh, fell in love with her writing. And then I like read her other novels as well. And the one that also had a real big impact on me, besides that the win was also work, because it is such an incredible novel about little women. The funny thing with it is, the biggest is the Meg is really how I always imagined my own aunt to be. I have two of them. The older one especially reminded me of her. And I have to say, I also love the fact that Louisa May Alcott included her own morals, especially in her books. And it is also very important because I think that is really thorough. It's in every novel of her, and then there are people who claim that she didn't love them. But the fact is, like, okay, if she only included Henry David Thoreau kind of character, and for example, Little Women, then maybe we could say, okay, she didn't love him. But it is clear that she was very much in love with him or had a crush on him because that kind of character is in all of her novels. Meg, uh, David, I wouldn't say Tom in... In an old-fashioned girl, it's completely like him, but when he grows matures, he also kind of becomes that kind of archetype. Yeah. And I think it's really important. Adam in Moods is also based on Henry David Thoreau. Yeah, right. 
And then there's the German man in the Queen of Hearts. He's based on Henry David Thoreau. Uh, so the list goes on and on. At some point, maybe in this podcast, I will go through all of these Henry David Thoreau archetypes. Yes, you are correct. He appears in literal disguises in pretty much every single Louisa May Alcott novel or short story. Yes, and also in A Fatal Long Love Chase, I think that's what it's called. It's quite a thriller. And I think that one is also very important because in that one, Henry David Thoreau is kind of, his archetype character is, I think, Father Ignatius. I don't know, I can't remember his name, but I think that was his name. And he also kind of really reminded me of Friedrich, but I have to say, I still love Friedrich more because I think for me, out of all his, uh, like, out of all the Henry David Thoreau archetypes, I think Friedrich is the one who speaks mostly to my heart, probably because he's also, like, because he can talk German. <laughs> and I always, soon when he uh, does include some German words, in his English phrases, in his English sentences, because I'm like, I can understand everything he says, and it is so cute. Yes, and it's adorable because in Little Woman, he he's still trying to study English, and he speaks with a broken English, and then he throws these German words here and there. Then in Little Man, the narrator says that he has improved his English a lot, but he still uses some some of his favorite German phrases, like shut and mine mine son and yeah <laughs> i think it is also very important for him to actually use this kind of like he has a very uh, very open vocabulary i'd say and i think it is also very important to note that he didn't come to new york for himself the reason why he came there was to provide for his nephews and I think it also shows his very caring nature. So it just came down to my mind. It's also kind of a parallel to Louisa May Alcott when she like wants to provide for her own nephews. And I think that was the reason why she even started writing Little Man. Like she wa- knew she wanted to write another book to the series, but she was like, okay, I have to provide for my nephews because their father just died. And then she wrote Little Man. And that is just so sweet, and it's also a kind of a wonderful parallel to how Friedrich came to New York to provide for his nephews, and when he seeks work so he can provide a home for Joe. That is true. I hadn't thought about that before. That is a parallel between Louisa May Alcott and Friedrich's character. Her brother-in-law, John Pratt, had died before she started to write Little Man. I also have to say, whenever I meet Little Man, always cry in the passage when John Brooke dies. And, but again, it is such a great revelation on how caring Beatrice is, because he is very important in the novel Little Men as well. And I just love him even more for that, that he's so caring and so sweet. And it's kind of funny, I also wrote that to you, it's kind of, he is like, normally in fiction, these kind of characters, like the ones who are very caring, who are very open about their feelings, who work for loved ones, mostly are actually women in these kind of fictions. And I also think it's very important that Friedrich is a male because he kind of unifies men and women in his character. Yes, he has very empathic nature that is often considered to be more feminine. Yes, that's true. But... I think for me, like I'm not in the age right now, but if there was somebody I'd like to marry or somebody I would fall in love with, that would probably be somebody who's empathetic, who loves me, respects me. It's of such importance for a person to be empathetic because then the world can evolve with people like that. And that was such a big deal for Louisa May Alcott. She found it very important that people did feel sympathy to others, especially those in bad situations, because she came from such a poor background herself. Definitely, it is very important that, unlike many fans who actually wanted Joan and Laura to be together, I think it is perfect that she made 
Joe and Friedrich an official couple because like in part one there are the Hummels, they are German and besides Beth, I think Joe is the one who cares for them the most. Like they like I said, they're German, they are poor, and that is the same how Friedrich is. Like he's German, he's poor. And I think it is also very important that she show that interracial relationships are important and that they are like just like marriages between couples that are the same race. I think it's still the day you can get some backlash if you are dating someone who is not from the same culture than you are. But in those times, it was even more scandalous. 